This is Adelaide today, a linear city running along the coast, St Vincent, Port Adelaide, Adelaide, Glenelg and the Adelaide Hills. Today, in 1870, we saw the development of a tramway system which was done by private enterprise in parallel with the railway system. The first attempt at railways was to go down the Port Road by two, private, by two different attempts by private companies which never developed and then the state government stepped in and built the first government-owned railway in the British Empire to Port Dock. Soon after, a private company built a railway line from South Terrace to Glenelg. And this was so popular that another company, private company, built a private railway line from South Terrace, sorry, from North Terrace Railway Station to Glenelg. These companies eventually merged and links occurred between these two railway lines. The prosperity of the city around Adelaide was such that at least 11 11 companies decided to set up a tramway system and the first trams went from Kensington to the city in North Adelaide. So the yellow is tramways and the green is railways. At Port Adelaide the tramway ran from Black, Black Diamond Corner to Albert Park and used the same broad gauge as the railways had but in the rest of the tramway system the trams were standard gauge. This attempted to use steam trams but because of the flooding that occurs at high tides in this area at that time the land levels were much lower than they are now tramway engine was given to this company here and they adopted horse trams. Adelaide actually had the largest horse tram network in Australia and all these yellow lines are horse trams. This is the horse tram network which ran in King William Street. At some points there were actually three three tracks down the middle of the road and this shows the horse tram network in the rest of the CBD of Adelaide. The South Terrace Railway was brought up to Victoria Square and so there were two tracks here, a broad gauge train to Victoria Square as a terminus and a standard gauge tram. And horses required soft feet for the roadway and so there was dirt roads and by 1906 the population of Adelaide had reached 162,000 people and the tramways was the horse tramways was seen as being too slow with not enough capacity for the growing population and in 1906 the state government nationalized all the tramways and created a metropolitan tramways trust Tramways Trust then proceeded to use the new technology of electrical trams to convert the horse trams 
into faster electric trams. This map is showing the railways which are put in green, where the horse trams used to be, where the electric trams took their place and then later on where the trolley buses took the place of trams. So we can see that Adelaide had a huge investment in transport technologies using rail. Rail has advantage of high capacity and high speed. The only problem is all of these railways and trams are at ground level. And so whilst this railway line here was the most popular of the two railways from Glenelg, this particular one has a large number of intersections and a large number of deaths were occurring as trains collided with passengers trying to catch a train, crossing over, not knowing the train was coming. And so the railway line here was also nationalised. So we then had a situation where all of the rails and all of the tramways were in the hands of the government. We actually had the situation at this point here where the Coonalite Gardens tramway, the Hyde Park tramway, both had two tracks and when they duplicated this railway there actually were six tracks in this section to there and similarly at Port Adelaide initially the railway used to go down St Vincent Street and there were two tracks for trams so there were three tracks running down to St Vincent Street one for the heavy rail to go across the bridge to Semaphore and two tram tracks which went across the bridge to Semaphore and similarly at Semaphore there were th three tracks at the Semaphore. This was in earlier times where passengers would get off vessels and goods were unloaded because of the problems of getting into the Port River and tides and dodge tides meant that uh, it's easier to get off here and catch a boat into Semaphore and then catch a train or tram into the city. The Metropolitan Tramways Trust even had its own power station just here at Port Adelaide and the electricity from that power station was carried to East Terrace where the Adelaide electricity supply station was alongside a building owned by the Metropolitan Tramways Trust where 900 volt DC electricity was created out of the alternating current which came from Port Adelaide. Later on the Adelaide Electricity Company stopped generating electricity at East Terrace and at Osborne had a power station. Much of the tramways had all these intersections with roads and the number of tracks which were involved cluttering up the roadways that the lobbying by the motor vehicles meant that the tramways were taken away and replaced with trolley buses. And so the trolley buses went to Linden Park and Beaumont and Arendale and along Port Road and along Port Road the trolley bus used to run every 45 seconds in the post-war period for a while. So let's bring us up to where we are now. 
we have the one tram line. This other tram line was abandoned because the depression meant they ran out of money. And it's been recently extended here to Hindmarsh. The problem is that the this tramway again is at street level and there's all these intersections. In some cases they're actually building overpasses and underpasses. So at this point the right the tram overpass goes over the railway line, which is a government railway line. It is now proposed that we will bring back the tramway system and this is the new back to the future where they're going to bring back trams with the all these intersections points of conflict between passengers wanting to get on and off tra trams on and off vehicles, cars and buses. The Dunstan Labor Government with the NEAPTA, North East Adelaide Public Transport Review Study, actually had contracts to build underground tramway from Victoria Square to a point here and then was going to go around to the northeastern suburbs as a tramway. Dunstan got sick and retired and the government lost the election and the Tonkin government, Liberal government, won the election and immediately cancelled the contract. So this section of tunnel for railways was going to be built, was funded, but was cancelled. The Bannon Labor government won the next election and they took on the initiative of the rubber tied railway, which is what the O-Barn basically is. It's a railway with rubber tired vehicles and built a superb system which is highly popular and carries 20,000 people an hour during rush periods. What's happened in recent times is that this O-Barn is having a tunnel built underneath the parklands to a point just here near Plain Drive at St Peter's. But what hasn't been done is bring the buses underneath the roads into the CBD. This kind of thing has been done in Brisbane where the bus system goes under the CBD, roads in the CBD. And the advantage of doing this is that you can get many more people in an area if you have grade separation. This plan of bringing trams back is all done with a whole series of points of conflict between road, buses and bike riders and pedestrians. This is a closer view of it, the Oban Access Tunnel. At this point, 20,000 people per hour in rush period will be brought into Grenfell Street. And if these tramways built to Norwood, a similar number of people will be brought. So we have buses and trams in this street. What the government has announced is an extension of the tramway to a point here to service the huge new developments going to occur at the old Royal Adelaide Hospital. But at this point there actually is a gap being left between the buildings where the trams, sorry, where the trains from the southern suburbs and the northern suburbs could be brought into and underneath the street and you could terminate them here or even better 
you could then extend them out to the eastern suburbs either by an underground tunnel then above ground but certainly to avoid all of these points of interaction between the outer ring route which is Portrush Road and the inner ring route which is Credible Terrace and Hackney Road. The Oban Tunnel, the Ra, old, old Ra building, the tramway or railway, if brought under this, could go across at 120 kilometers per hour. I've had the pleasure of visiting many cities in the world and using public transport and one very good example is the Bay Area Rapid Transit system BART, BART where five counties in the area of Oakland and San Francisco have joined together to create a fast rail system which is partly underground and partly above ground where the trains run at 120 kilometers per hour as a normal speed and 130 as their top speed. San Francisco is a very spread out area similar to Adelaide and in 2016 the rate payers in these five boroughs have authorized a new one billion dollar one billion dollar redevelopment of this system. One of the problems in Australia is the developments cause improvements to land property values and it's the local government authorities that could get the benefit from that development so called value capture so that the payment for the building of these rail railways could come from the improvement to the property values. Surface trams for the north are going to go into the city across this intersection with Rundle Road and the Credible Terrace. The Credible Terrace is actually the inner ring route. At the moment, the Hobart and Access Tunnel is being built down the middle of the inner ring route. Credible Terrace, the city ring route. Just crossing over where the tunnel for the O-Barn will go. Originally horse trams and the private company from Kensington came through here to the city and then to North Adelaide. Later on the private tram lines were nationalised and then at the beginning of the 20th century the trams were electrified. Two tram lines ran down this street to Norwood and they were electrified. It proposed to reintroduce tram lines at the ground level. Two tracks down this road. It's proposed or suggested that that would cause a return of congestion. And the better solution would be 
an elevated tramway system. The building on the right is Prince Alfred College Gymnasium. This is Kent Town. A lot of the streets of the city, the same names are used again in this part of this city. But now, Fullerton Road, the parade, this intersection used to actually have five roads. They're actually, oh, sorry, there are five roads here now, there used to be six roads. On the left is actually a place where the road used to be, but currently there are five roads at this intersection. Fullerton Road, North Terrace, sorry, Fullerton Road, the Parade. So two electric tram line tracks ran down this road and propose to reintroduce them across all these busy intersections. coming down off the hills were an uh, area which was settled early because of the availability of water. Osman Terrace. Which is one of the north-south roads. Trams would have to wait at the intersections. This is now the shopping section of the parade. With town hall on the left. section we're coming up to is effectively the outer ring route. This is Paynham Road, Portrush Road. Sorry, it's Portrush Road and heavy trucks are directed down Portrush Road to bypass the city. We're now 
going to Kensington. See the line of traffic waiting to cross into section. Kensington was one of the original villages of Adelaide. And you can see that in the layout of the streets and the parts of old Kensington.